Hi everyone, my name is Gron K and welcome back to the 10th and final part on the video series on how to use Action, Autodesk Smoke's main 3D compositor. In the previous video, we rendered our clip to the desktop using Clip History. To finish off this series of videos, we're going to go ahead and look at versioning inside the timeline. In action, press the exit button located to the left hand side to exit back to the desktop. The last rendered clip is highlighted and you will see a small H icon to the bottom right of the clip. The light grey symbol tells us that this clip has history. Just as a quick tip, if we had exited action and we wanted to get back in with all the same settings and media, we would select the Action button in the interface and also press the S button. The S stands for Same. With the white cursor, clicking anywhere on the desktop will launch us back to Action and we'll still have all of our same media and settings. To exit Action, just press the Exit button to return to the desktop. Now let's say for instance that the rendered motion graphic is going to go into a timeline or sequence. So to the bottom left of the interface, we will press the New Sequence button. A new sequence appears and we'll switch the record area layout from Storyboard to Record Timeline using the blue pop-up located on the left of the interface. Now we will simply drag and drop the clip into the timeline. Switching the source area layout from thumbnail view to standard view, we can now see the standard player. Scrubbing the positioner in the timeline, we can get the idea of how the clip would sit in the edit. However, if we wanted to version it with a different title or information perhaps, the last thing we want to do is strip it out the timeline and rebuild it all over again. The easiest solution is to manipulate the clip history in the timeline. To do this, go to the bottom left of the timeline and we will find the Layer Plus button. Pressing Layer Plus will add another layer to the timeline. Now hold down the C hotkey on the keyboard and click and drag a copy of the clip from Layer 1 and drop it onto Layer 2. If we wanted to, we could hold down the Command hotkey on the keyboard and click on the segment to bring up its contextual pop-up menu. In the pop-up menu, we can choose to rename the segment to version 2 simply for organization. The little H icon is still on both clips. This means that even though the clip was copied, the history goes with it. To edit the history in the timeline, simply double click on the H icon. Action will prompt us, asking us if we wish to overwrite the old setup with the one we're about to load. Simply click the Confirm button and we are launched into Action. Scrubbing to the end of the composition, we would like to replace the Tech Talk text with the Tech Beat text. Now you can very easily make your own 3D text in action with any font you want, but I want to show you what happens if we have another 3D model for importing. Switch to the node bin menu on the left hand side of the interface. Double click on the import node again to return to the file browser. Here we have a second FBX 3D file to import. Just selecting it imports it into the 3D composite. Over on the left in the schematic view, we can use the navigator to pan over to the newly imported nodes. Now depending on how the export was done in the 3D application, there may be some nodes we need and some nodes we don't. In this case, the only node that is valuable to us is this Geom node which is actually the 3D model. So we'll just drag the Geom node out of the way so we can delete the other nodes that we don't want. 
at the bottom right of the interface, ensure the selection mode is set to selected and not branch or all. Back in the schematic view, you can hold down the control hotkey on the keyboard and drag a marquee over the unwanted nodes to select them. We can either press Shift D on the keyboard or press the delete button located to the bottom right of the interface to delete the nodes. Coming back to the schematic, if we now look at the node connections of the original model, we can locate the first Tech Talk text and select it. To pull it out the branch, we could manually disconnect the connections between the nodes. Alternatively, we can hold down the Control and Option hotkeys on the keyboard and drag out the node from the branch. At this point, we can decide whether we want to delete the original 3D geometry, but if we don't want to, we can simply press the H hotkey on the keyboard and this will hide the node. The hide function works for selected objects and anything can be hidden or unhidden using the same H hotkey command. We can now introduce the new 3D object into the existing branch. Drag the Tech Beat Geom node over the existing connection. To automatically add it into the branch, hold down the Shift hotkey on the keyboard and then release the Shift hotkey and the cursor at the same time. The Geom node snaps in place and it picks up all the attributes which ripple through the connected branch. Scrubbing the time bar now shows how everything has updated. Let's go back to frame 1. Looking to the left of the interface, you will notice that the process button is now missing. This is normal when you have entered any clip through clip history. In fact, you have two options. Where the exit button used to be, we now have a blue pop-up. Clicking and holding down on the pop-up reveals two commands. Cancel simply means that you exit action with no changes being applied. Return means that we exit action and all the updated changes will take effect. By choosing return, action will re-render the composite with the newly updated model. This is truly versatile and you can see the power of clip history. We don't have to redo everything on the desktop to make changes, and this is a big time saver for making deadlines, versioning, or even quick fixes. Moving forward in time a little bit, Action has finished rendering the new 3D composite, and now we have two versions on the timeline. If we move the focus point up and down between the two layers, we can see that we have created multiple versions of a motion graphic and everything is stored in each clip. I'd say that this is very powerful. Over the entire series, we've been focusing mainly on the fundamentals of action. Now there is plenty more functionality buried deep inside the Action 3D Compositor that is waiting for you to discover. Keep an eye out on the Smoke Learning channel for more videos to help you on your way. If you'd like to know any more information about Autodesk Smoke, or if you'd like to download the free 30-day trial copy, just go to autodesk.com forward slash smoke for Mac. I hope you've enjoyed this fundamental series of action, Autodesk Smoke's main 3D compositor. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again really soon.